once i have the ic let's understand the pins like what the what is the function of the pin how many pin does it has and what are the different functionalities each pin serves so in my example i'm considering an 8 pin dip so if i want my ic to function the first thing is i need to supply some kind of energy to it and this that is a potential difference and this energy is always given by the supply line the vcc and the ground so the first pin is by which i apply it a ground that is a point at a lower potential and the eighth pin is my point at a higher potential that is my vcc and i told you that the vcc the supply ranges from 5 volt to 18 volt so this is where your ic receives the energy high potential low potential so therefore when you, you are giving a potential difference, you are giving an energy, you are giving a supply. And so if I talk about the first pin, that is the ground pin, what can I say about this? Now, this ground pin, a care should be taken that I directly connect it to ground and I do not connect it through a resistance. So there is one like this and the second this if I connect this pin through a resistance. So in this case, we will prefer to connect the ground directly and not through a resistance. And what is the reason? The reason is because if we connect through a resistance, then current will flow through it. And due to this, and whenever current flows through a resistance, a voltage develops. And this tray voltage will cause the internal component semiconductor of this IC to heat up. So to prevent those heating, what we will do is we will avoid using this resistor while grounding and we will directly ground this. The second pin is called as a trigger pin. This trigger pin, as the name itself, it triggers. Now, what does it triggers? It, it triggers means it, it stimulates or it, it causes some kind of an output. Normally, this trigger pin is a low pin. That is mostly it, it activates when you keep it at low. And if you keep it high, then it does not get activated. So this, if this trigger gets activated, it will generate output timing pulses from the, from the IC. So it is very necessary that this trigger should be activated. If, and it depends upon my application too. That when do I when when do I trigger it? When do I activate it? So it's a low, uh, low signal pin, and, it, and this is triggered when my voltage applied on this pin is one third. That is less than one third of the supply voltage VCC. So let's say if your VCC is eighteen, then the voltage on this trigger pin should be less than one third of 18 that is less than 6 volt and then and then only it will activate the output to generate waveform pulses. So the voltage at this should be less than 1 by 3 VCC. The third pin is my output pin. So this is my output of the IC. So if any kind of waveform I, I am expecting to receive, that will be received at the third pin, that is the output pin. Now this output pin can do two things. Number one, it can give out current and also it can take in current. So in my in my uh, electronics language, we say it, it can source current if it delivers a load current, if it gives out a load current and it can also absorb current so we say it can sink current but how much as we saw in the future uh, the feature this this was about maximum load current of 200 milliampere and 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 this current was sufficient to drive any ttl family that is any transistor transistor logic uh, integrated circuit family so if i if i'm giving it a high if the output is high okay it will source current it will give out current and this when it gives out current this will be 200 milliampere now when it is at zero so suddenly if the output is at zero it is at lower potential 
so whatever is connected to the output that will instead start giving delivering current to the output so it has to sink the current absorb the current up to what limit it can absorb the current and that limit is again 200 milliampere so source when my output is high at high logic that is at this point and sink when it is at logic low level that is at this point so when it is at high and it is connected to any other circuit so this becomes at a higher potential the other circuit becomes lower potential so it will send current from the output but when it is at logic low the other circuit to which it is connected that becomes at high potential and now it has to absorb current so it will become a sink in either ways it will support 200 milliampere of current the next pin the fourth pin is called as a reset pin so the word itself says when I say reset it means bringing everything to default so the fourth pin is a reset pin now when this reset is activated this IC triple five will stop working that means the output will be zero it will stop working for a moment for the period of time it is reset and how is it activated? This is activated by connecting to a lower voltage or a low voltage point. How do I achieve it? By connecting it to ground. So if I connect, if I connect it to ground, this pin gets activated and my IC stops functioning. My output comes to zero. And therefore, minimum voltage, or sorry, maximum voltage, 0 0.7 volt. So my voltage at the reset pin, if I want the IC to be reset, the voltage should be less than 0 0.7 volt and current up to 0 0.1 milliampere. Now, if I do not want my IC to be reset because in normal operation, the, the reset should not perform any function. So in that scenario, what I need to do is this reset should be connected to a positive voltage to a high positive voltage high level that is a positive voltage in terms of a digital we say this is active low so when you keep make it low it becomes active similarly trigger is also active low see it's active low the next pin that is pin number five is control pin On this control pin, already two thirds of the supply voltage exists. It is brought over to this pin. And why it is brought, or what is the part when we when I start explaining you the functional block diagram, in that part you will understand. Remember, I was discussing in this lecture about those uh, uh, varying the duty cycle, the on period and the off period. So I can vary it and who will help me in that scenario in pulse width modulation it is this control pin and I, I will prefer that you will better understand when I start when I deal with this in, in the application rather mentioning about this but it controls the width of the pulses if, if the voltage at this particular point. So I can also apply external pulses external voltage if I want to vary the width of the pulses. So the output pulse, if it is generated, it will end once the voltage on this pin, the threshold pin reaches to two by third of VCC. So the voltage on this pin is not always two by third VCC. So long as it is not two by third VCC, the output will continue to the on period. But the moment it reaches to two by third, now this voltage comes from inside. The moment it reaches to 2 by 3rd, the timing circuit will close down the pulse. That is the pulse on period will end and it will start with off period. On period will end and the moment it reaches to 2 by 3rd VCC, this will be off. So this threshold pin, the timing cycle is completed when the voltage on the pin is equal to or greater than 2 by 3rd of VCC. And the last pin is, because we already discussed with the VCC, 
This is called as a discharge pin. The seventh pin is the discharge pin. So what does the discharge pin functions like? Outside the discharge pin, I connect a capacitor because this capacitor controls the timing of the pulses. So I call this capacitor as a timing capacitor. I connect outside the seventh pin. So this capacitor will charge and discharge. So while charging, it will charge through VCC, but it also needs a path where it should discharge. And that discharge is done through this seventh pin, that is the discharge pin. Inside, there is an NPN transistor and the collector of the transistor is connected to the discharge pin. So what does the discharge pin do? It provides a discharge path for a timing capacitor which is connected externally for timing capacitor. So if I summarize the spin configuration, how does it looks like? So this consists of my 8 pin IC, the first pin is ground and we directly connected to ground. The eighth pin is VCC, it, it supplies from 5 volt to 18 volt. And the, of course, and the, and the supply range varies. It depends upon whether it is a NE or SC. The second thing, second pin is my trigger pin. As I told you, this trigger pin is an active low pin. Now, when I say it is an active low pin, that is when the voltage on the spin is less than one by third of VCC. Then it activates my output and my output starts generating a pulse. So if the voltage of the spin is high, my IC will not function. So maximum voltage should be one by third VCC. So it should be less than one by third VCC if you want your output to generate pulses. The third one is my output of the IC from where I start getting my pul output pulses. The fourth one is my reset pin. And this reset, just like my trigger, is also active low. So this will function only when you connect it to ground or give it a low voltage. If the reset gets activated, your IC will stop functioning. Your output will become zero. You will not get any kind of pulses. So in during the reset, if I want my IC to function normally, so what should I do? To inactivate the reset, I should connect it to a digital high that is either to 5 volt or 8 volt. That is whatever I consider high voltage for my IC. The supply voltage is a high for my IC. So this is an active low. It becomes active only when it is taken to low, that is to 0 volt. Then I come to my control pin. And as I said, this control pin, it, it has about 2 by 3rd VCC voltage on the pin. And where does this 2 by 3rd comes from? It comes from internal of the IC. I can, I can, I can make more voltage here from outside and or I can reduce the voltage here from outside. Increasing or reducing will affect the timing of the, the, the width of the pulse. How? As I said, this is just an introduction. So we have an application. The sixth pin is my threshold pin threshold the maximum limit so the moment the voltage at this pin reaches to 2 by 3rd of the supply VCC your IC period will stop that is the IC pulse with the on period will end and it will go to off period so it is it always 2 by 3rd no it gradually increases 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 seventh pin is my discharge pin and what does this pin do Internally, this pin is connected to an NPN transistor's collector. So what we do is out when I now this is since this is a timer IC. So there is something called as the timing of the pulses. So who decides the timing? The timing is decided because outside externally we connect a capacitor. And we call this capacitor as a timing capacitor. So normally this capacitor will charge. And then it will discharge. So to, to discharge, the discharge path is done through this particular seventh pin. And the charging is done where, when we connect a resistance 
through the supply pin. So this is my charging part and this is my discharging part. Don't worry, when I deal with your uh, block diagram, you will understand where this comes and what exactly happens in the discharge. So that is my next subsequent lecture where we'll talk about the functional diagram means what happens functionally inside this IC that you start getting these kind of pulses or output waveform. So in this lecture, we, we, we worked upon the triple five uh, timer pin configuration, the features and how the introduction to this particular IC. Thank you.